apart from this it gives me immense pleasure to welcome our chairman of this session uh, vice admiral anup singh uh, decorated with pvsm avsm and i'm retired former cnc eastern naval command and our speaker of this session ju jong chi vice president c tech solution international they are working towards connecting your mind to strive towards success and achievement we are grateful to them for accepting our invitation and becoming a part of this session the subtheme of today's session is ship building lessons for international examples with focus on china but before we start with our lecture on this subtheme i would like to introduce the chairman vice admiral anup singh formal commander in chief eastern naval command is a keen researcher on maritime as also on energy security and china's maritime activism so may i request chairman sir to introduce the speaker of this session and to greet us with his valuable speech thank you thank you for that very uh, kind introduction um, i will just take a second um, i mean somebody's mic seems to be on kindly switch off your devices those who are not participating at the moment uh, yes <clears throat> uh, i request all the everyone to please mute their mics yes okay um thank you sneha uh, first of all <clears throat> i think i was uh, moving a step ahead of uh, you all sneha knowing that we were set back by almost an hour behind schedule i had quietly munched my lunch knowing that you people will offer only a virtual lunch right now therefore uh, we are ready to move further and um, uh, let me first of all introduce uh, the speaker for the session who's going to talk about uh, less uh, international lessons with particular focus on china and so far as shipbuilding is concerned by mr yu um, who is currently vice president projects for ctech solutions a very renowned international company based in singapore i think uh, he has he's a, a very successfully delivered several wind turbine installation jackups in china and oil rigs in singapore um he has also been involved in deliveries of numerous jackups of uh, different kinds semi submersibles and fpsos um uh, in so far as conversion in jurong shipyard in singapore is concerned so without uh, further ado may i request mr yu to to deliver his presentation on this all important topic on which all eyes across the world have been set since the early part of this millennium china uh, the juggler in so far as maritime activity and particularly in so far as ship building is concerned over to you mr yu thank thank you um amro anup singh um just let me turn on the presentation now first Give me one second. Can can you guys see the presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, it's coming up. It, yes, okay. it's on. It's on. Slideshow is on, Mr. Yu. Oh. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, you are aware that uh, the speaker has only twenty minutes, so I request you to restrict your presentation to and, thank you. Understood. No problem. Okay. So thank good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking time off to join me this afternoon. I'm I'm very glad to attend this webinar, and I'm more honored when I was given this opportunity to present. Okay. Today I'm going to talk about shipbuilding lessons from international example. We focus on China. I understand that um we are running out of time now, so so I will try to speed up with my presentation. Uh, without further ado, further ado, uh, I will start. Um, what you're seeing, okay, for today's presentation, uh, I will start by giving a brief introduction of C3 uh, Solutions International and myself. 
Then I'll show some slides that give a shipbuilding market overview, particularly focused on China. Then, based on my experience, I will share my opinion on what is the advantage, the disadvantage, strength, and weaknesses of China shipbuilding. At the end of my presentation is my conclusion and any questions that Mr. Chairman or others may have. So, a uh, brief introduction of myself. Just now, actually, uh, Amaro, I'm not saying have already spoke about it, so I, I won't spend too much time on it, but I will say something about CPAC Solutions. We are uh, an engineering company based in Singapore, which I'm also based in. Uh, we have office located globally, as you can see from the map. Um, so my roles cover both shipyards and owner reps, and for my time in China, um, I was a owner representative there. So um, I have a first eye view on how China shipbuilding industry is being managed and, and how, how what is the efficiency right now. <clears throat> first, I will start by showing some slides that can give us a market overview of global shipbuilding industry. Um, based on market research, by um, in terms of converted gross tonnage, in 2020, 2021, China is responsible for 48.7% of the new build orders, while South Korean shipyard had won 37.7% of those or the, of the other orders. Uh, we see that the rest of the world is only responsible for a small percentage of the remaining orders, majority being won by Japanese shipyard. If we if you look at the order book up to date, and this is again based on converted gross tonnage, we can see that China and South Korea is still leading in terms of market share of UB orders. And the order books have stretched to delivery in 2014 and 2015. Of course, this charge does not reflect the type of vessel ordered. Um, and we know that for vessels such as LNG carrier carriers, these orders are mostly won by South Korean yards, while Chinese yards is the majority winner for, for container box ships and bulk carriers and other cargo ships. This is another chart of new or new ship orders by quarters. And once again, we are seeing strong performance from Chinese and South Korean yards. Um, one interesting development during the last two years, we see some companies such as Evergreen or One High, who are traditionally, traditionally tied to Japan's and South Korean yards. They are starting to have conversation or even placing orders with Chinese yard. Uh, this actually illustrate the competency and cost effectiveness of Chinese shipyard. Um, political reason aside, global payers now have no problem at all putting orders in Chinese shipyard. This is a result of low cost, aggressive market share grabbing strategy by China during the last 20 and 30 years. And they are re reaping the award now. Um, this is the order book differentiate by type of vessel. We can see that majority of new orders are container box ships, and this is no surprise. We all know that COVID-19 pandemic had caused a drastic change um, in shipping. The rise in demand of containers and container ships is driving this order spree. We see companies like C-SPAN, Costco, and Evergreen all placing orders. We also see that South Korea is still the major player in LNG carrier. Um, there's another interesting finding about this from this is about the percentage of offshore structures. Traditional hydrocarbon facilities are no longer in a building crazy phase few years like few years ago. We can see that uh, long-term development that require long durations such as FPSO and production platform such as um, Arctic LNG production platform is still taking place and in China also. But the growth of Offshore orders are mainly driven by the demand of renewables, such as green farm, jacket, foundation, and other sustainable developments such as offshore fish farm, prawn farm, etc. etc. Once again, Chinese owners and Chinese shipyard is our major driver in this development. Let me just give you one second. Um, are we still seeing the presentation? Sorry. It's it's a blank, black color. Now it's back. Okay. Oh, you can, 
You can okay. just get that to slideshow, please. Okay, okay. All right, sorry. Uh... Okay. Uh, okay. We are now showing an, another chart that shows the increasing inclination toward container ship orders. Um, to be frank, I myself, we don't know what is the next go-to model or the, when is the next order spree, but we should have a clearer picture for shipbuilding future in next year once we have uh, more, more capable handles of, of the pandemics. Okay. Now we can talk about advantages, disadvantages, strengths and weaknesses of Chinese shipyards. Okay. Uh, Chinese shipyards from being mere shipbuilders in the 90s, they are now today the industry leaders. In the last three decades, the Chinese shipbuilding industry has transformed from a basic ship producers to an industry focusing on high technology and support equipment. This has allowed them to dominate the world market in both commercial and, and naval shipbuilding segment with 70% of Chinese shipbuilding produce being exported to 91 countries and regions to countries like Greece, Norway, US, South Korea. There are some old perceptions about Chinese shipbuilding such as low quality building, suspicious material, unskilled workers and language barriers. Most of these are no longer true. And in fact, a lot of world first technology is currently being developed and built in China, such as circular FPSO, automate, fully automated fish farm. From, from China internal statistics, we know that there are more than uh, 1,200 shipyards in, in China. And we are not talking about small shipyards with limited steel fab fabrication facility. We are talking about shipyards that is capable of full EPC process of building vessel 100 meter and over. The Chinese shipbuilding and ship repair industry comprise of yard, big and small, coastal and inland with the shipbuilding and repair facilities concentrated primarily in Shanghai, Guangzhou and Dalian. These activities have developed at the mouth of Yangtze and Pearl River. We can see from the slide that um, China has a very long co coastal length of about 14,500 kilometers, covering all kinds of weathers. This allows Chinese CEO to deal with all kinds of projects and clients from all regions. The northern part of China is also in close proximity of China, uh, Russia, allowing the building industry to thrive serving both domestic and Russian clients. The next slide is showing the infrastructure in China. Um, high-speed rail in China is the world's largest, world longest high-speed rail network. And currently, on 2021, there's the total length is 17, uh, 33,900 kilometers. The traveling speed of this rail is up to can can be up to 350 kilometers per hour. This enable quick interaction between client, shipyard vendors, and also a quick logistic solution. For bulky transfer, transportation by bus is still easily, easily accessible and economical. Uh, as you can see from the from the map that is sh shown on the slide, with Shanghai as, as a center, the whole development radiate out and all are within three hours travels by road, railway, or one or maximum two days by water. What we are seeing on screen is just the area around Shanghai. If you go further south, the Pearl River region uh, near to Shang, uh, Shenzhen and Guangzhou is also showing similar density and concentration in terms of development. Um, major equipment vendors facilities are at close proximity around this region, enable quick turnaround and response time. This is a perfect demonstration of just-in-time principle that allow optimization in construction and warehousing processes. In terms of communication, we know that China is the leading 5G deployment country and the network coverage is extensive. This enables very effective communication between China and with the rest of the world. Um, China maritime law have required foreign flag vessels to make mandatory reporting prior entry to the water, China water. And most of the vessels operating in Chinese region are Chinese flag and CCS class. Due to the sheer volume of vessels operating in this region, CCS has actually becoming a, one of the major classification society in recent years. AP Molomers and CCS have recently just signed an agreement to drive decarbonization in the shipping industry. 
The framework agreement will kickstart research between Chinese and European enterprise aiming to speed up decarbonization in shipping. In other words, CCS influence is getting bigger as Chinese shipbuilding grow, and the effects is mutual. Some provincial government in China has enforced certain local content requirements for local projects. There's also statewide directive to ban non-value added export, such as block fabrication for foreign shipper. So for now, Chinese PR and it was not allowed to export any power structure block for, for foreigner shipper anymore. Last year, China have announced a very aggressive plan to achieve carbon peak emissions in 2030 and achieve carbon neutral in 2060. This further drives the development of renewable energies, bring shipbuilding industry all along. There are many state-owned shipyards in China. Uh, analysis has shown that government subsidy decreased the cost of production in Chinese shipyard by 13, up to 13 to 20 percent. There was also evidence that Chinese shipyards are less efficient than their Japanese and South Korean counterpart, but this gap has been reducing. Chinese companies are increasingly dominant across the maritime supply chain, aided by a complicated system of formal and informal state support that is unrivaled in size and scope. Uh, state support to Chinese firm in the shipping and shipbuilding industry can be in the form of financing from state banks, direct subsidies, uh, state bank fundraising, preferential borrowing rate, and other non-market advantage. We also continue to see joint venture of foreign, foreign shipyard with China local shipyard to gain a foothold in Chinese um, shipbuilding industry. These JV include um, Capo Nantong, set up by Singapore Capital Group, and next by, by Japan Kawasaki Corporation. Over the years, many equipment manufacturers have set up their regional manufacturing facility in China. This is a result of attractive tax rebate policy offered by state and provincial government, and also because of sheer volume of orders from Chinese shipyard. However, it is worth to note that China has not yet managed to achieve a satisfactory level of self-reliance. For Chinese built vessels, the percent of Chinese built equipment is considerably lower, especially if, especially if the vessel is, is getting com more complex. The major subcomponents which the Chinese industry is effectively producing are low-tech products such as palm gears, and and at the same time, those equipment which is more complex, such as um, navigation equipment, DP, are still imported from foreign suppliers such as Kongsberg or Frano. <clears throat> China has also been very aggressive in terms of acquisition. U.S. design hall Freddie and Goldman has been acquired by the PNC a few years ago, allowed them to enter the then lucrative Auric market. We see that recently, instead of buying global brand, global brand, sales network or goodwill, Chinese companies are now mainly trying to acquire concrete assets such as state-of-the-art technologies or R&D facilities. Besides, due to the increasing internal demand, the Chinese company acquisition no, no longer use their acquisition to gain market share abroad. Instead, they use this acquisition to gain advantage in technology and to strengthen their position within the domestic Chinese market. We see the emergence of, of because of this merger and acquisitions activity, we see the emergence of a lot of Chinese brand local equipment suppliers. ZPMC is now the leading crane maker in the world, while a company like TSC and Weichai is gaining foothold in the drilling and marine engine industry. For Lifeboat and Light Raft, Chinese city Changyin is actually being called the, the home of home of Lifeboat because majority of the Lifeboat being installed on, on all the vessels now are, are manufactured from this city. For lower Lower technology equipment such as palm and wolf that we mentioned just now, 
Chinese-made equipment are now universally accept accepted and no longer frowned upon by international ship owners. <clears throat> of course, low prices and improving after-sales services definitely help. When we talk about design at R&D, um, the state-owned Marine Design and Research Institute of China play a big role in Chinese shipbuilding industry. This is one of the leading design houses in China established in 1956. <clears throat> and it's estimated to have employed um, 1,700 engineers with more than 550 designs available. And what's more impressive is there are plenty more of this kind of design house that have the capability to do a similar design. <clears throat> Towing tanks, simulators, and other facilities have been set up also. There are also a few major universities in China, such, such as Tianjin University and Jiangsu Technology, that is delivering <coughs> plenty of fresh manpower and fresh talent to this industry. <coughs> One thing worth to share is Chinese shipyard is still using the same software as other international companies such as AutoCAD and CIS, maybe work. This is due to easy communication and fusion of design with foreign input. But we also see that there's a, these foreign software companies <coughs> are more than willing to produce their software in local Chinese version that enable easier usage for Chinese market. Now we come to the witnesses. As we discussed, discussed before, there are certain technologies such as LNG tank membranes, containment and navigation and DP, which are still being controlled by foreign vendors. We also see this year that Chinese is facing a power crisis that result in power rationing in certain provinces. <laughs> we didn't see any impact of um, power rationing on shipbuilding industry yet, but this may become critical if become more serious. The trade war with US has made export of certain products laden with tariff. And once again, this will be a hurdle for, for the major driver of shipbuilding, which is shipping industry. The sanctioning of several shipyard under the CSSC and CSIC corporation due to their state-owned nature, also making it less attractive to foreigner ship owners. As this creates an, an unnecessary risk when they order a new ship. The development of Chinese economy also improved the living standard of general publics. As more people are, go, are, are willing to go into a white collar job, or it's more expensive for Shibuya to obtain labor for shipbuilding. The aging population certainly doesn't help too. I, have, I personally have been staying in China for, for many years. So <clears throat> based on Based on my experience, Chinese shipyard is operating at extremely low labor cost. This is achieved by constant inflow of new labors from rural areas. Construction standard in Chinese shipyard varies. Big yards tend to perform up to international standard. We focus on 5S, standardized QHSE, and the full EPC control. Chinese shipyard operating all years around, seven days a week, with the exception of um, during Chinese New Year, where one or two weeks pause in work is expected. Based on type of vessels, for a standard product, the time the time required from QLA to launching can be as short as 30 days, 30 to 45 days. <clears throat> My personal experience, delivery time for a hundred uh, for a 1,000 ton floating crane or wind farm installation vessel can be as short as 9 to 12 months. <clears throat> I also see that airbag launching is extremely popular in China. This allows shipyard to operate nearly everywhere as long as it has access to waterfront. While we are talking about the numerous shipyard in China, there are also plenty of these shipyard which equipped with impressive dry dock capability. This allow the optimization in terms of block election sequence coupled with mega capacity gantry crane which can range from 600 tons to, to 10,000 tons. The construction sequence can be great, greatly improved and duration shortened. I also feel that language is still a barrel as majority of international ship owners still speak English but this is not a critical issue. <clears throat> 
Also, there's also a global trend that Mandarin has becoming more popular. I must say the level of engineering in China certainly improved compared to 20 years ago. This is a direct, re direct result of training and learning from foreign vendors and owners. The Chinese domestic demand is going strong, fueled by strong government subsidy and also the increasing major role paid by China merchant ship owners such as Costco and C-SPAN. All these companies either operate their own shipyards or have a preferred partner in shipyards such as C-SPAN with Yang Zijiang. We also see that Chinese shipyard partnering with global clients such as the partnership between Shanghai White Gulf Chao and Carnival to build cruise ship. This partnership is not just in shipbuilding, but also cover the future operation of vessel after delivery. Last but not least, I feel that China will be a major player in the new energy and also decarbonization of marine industry. We see that more and more shipyard focus on the following product, such as wind farm installation jacket, jacket wind farm supply vessels, floating cranes and dwarf fuel vessels, or green energy vessels. In fact, in 2020, China have built more wind farm capacity than the whole world combined the year before. The emergence of offshore wind farm not just fulfilling the country energy demand, it also drives shipbuilding business throughout the operating lifetime of a wind farm. So come to the end of my presentation. In conclusion, efficiency and quality wise, China's Chinese made vessels are on par with other international uh, typically on par with other international shipbuilders. There are plenty of strengths shown by Chinese shipyard. However, this is an, not an overnight thing. What we are seeing is Chinese repeating, ripping the reward of investment decision and long-term planning that can originate back from 20 to 30 years ago. One key thing I observe is Chinese shipyard is willing to back on future, like what they are doing now with green energy. <clears throat> and they are also operating with higher risk appetite probably with the backing of state or, or province agency. Lastly, I would like to say that shipbuilding is not a standalone industry. Besides target feeding helps and subsidy, the creation of external factors such as stable <clears throat> economy, great infrastructure, constant talent flow are equally important for, for shipbuilding industry. With, with this, I conclude my presentation thank you <clears throat> thank you very much mr yu that was a very interesting insight as to into into what china began with just uh, two decades ago and where it has reached today in so far as quality as well as numericals are concerned uh, you've done an excellent SWOT analysis strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats and i don't think there is um, any visible threat at this moment to the chinese because they've overtaken the last leading uh, world shipbuilding book order nation uh, and in so far as costs are concerned but more importantly what you said that quality has improved i've seen it firsthand uh, 10 years ago i uh, visited a brand new treasure acquired by an indian company mm -hmm. um, and it was terrible just 10 years ago it was so terrible that it appeared to a uh, uh, naval sailor like me that uh, the propulsion system did not match the the shafting or the main engines and they just coupled things together by buying them from there and there and then i visited the engine room and saw there was a, a plate which had been affixed in chinese characters mm -hmm. over the original as we call it, OEM's nameplate, which was embossed. Mm. Uh, today, that is not the case. Today, they are dredgers and merchant ships, and that dredger at 5,000 plus cubic uh, feet of, uh, uh, of capacity. Uh, it means it was large cutter suction dredger. Same is the case with their merchant ships. The ships being built by them are not just cheap compared to the rest of the world, particularly compared to developed shipbuilding countries like ROK or Japan. But uh, quality-wise, they are almost coming at par with those countries. The other thing you mentioned was some 1,200-odd shipyards, which is a very impressive figure compared to even developed countries which have been historically been into shipbuilding. 
uh, and 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 someone brought up a figure in the early part of this millennium around 2004 or 5 that there are almost 5000 shipyards if you if you count all those up the yangtze and the yellow rivers which are only making sections and then transporting them by shallow water barges over the river into main shipyards which are integrating that is what makes them the leading uh, shipbuilder of the world because numbers really matter and apart from number of shipyards the integrating yard is obviously ordering on many subcontractors and only integrating and therefore the speed of construction may not be as good as Hyundai or Daewoo, but it is really, really remarkable. Um, the, uh, lastly, I would like to say before I open the floor to uh, questions from them, is that, um, you know, all this happened when I think it was in President Hu Jintao's time when a SOP was given to peasants across the country to say, if you really want to earn round the year and earn better salaries, go to the industrialized Chinese world. And most of them were absorbed into brand new shipyards which are coming up in around 2004 or three or four. And that's how their blue collared workers were not quality conscious because they had not been trained in the art of shipbuilding. But today things are different. The same peasants and their offspring, which is a new generation today, are properly skilled. So skill sets have been um, have been created in that country at an impressive pace. And I don't think anybody will be able to beat them in so far as pricing is concerned, obviously because state-controlled stuff. All right. Now, I don't see any hands having been raised. If there are questions, kindly shout. Um, is, are there any questions? by anyone i don't see them all right so um, obviously first of all uh, uh, people have understood everything that you said because it was indeed a very interesting presentation and secondly they have they have been forced to skip lunch by camry <laughs> and my, my friend and old shipmate uh, Raj Dhankar is uh, watching with very glued eyes to what I am saying, but um, but uh, thank you very much, Mr. Yu, for the great insight, and we'll look forward to further interaction. Thank you. Um, over to Kamri, please. Thank you, sir. Now, may I please request our Tiva BSc student Shweta Vadgaukar to deliver the vote of thanks? Good afternoon. It is my honor as a student of Defense and Strategic Studies to propose a formal vote of thanks on behalf of Central Hindu Military Education Society. Kanhoji Angre Maritime Research Institute take this opportunity to thank Yu Jun Chi, Vice President, C Tech Solution International, for the excellences that he has shown towards the burning issue and who have graced this webinar with his valued lecture. Our heart full of thanks are also due to our. Chairman of this session, Vice Admiral Anup Singh, PVSM, AVSM, NM Retired, former CNC Eastern Naval Command for inspiring as with his speech and also for inspiring his time and precious thoughts with as his, his views are the words of wisdom and we would follow them in our endeavor to contribute more to the issue. I extend my thanks of CHME society officials and respected members for their guidance and support. I must not be forgetful in thanking all our staff and all other participating organizations for providing every possible corporation for this session. I also thank everyone who's contributed independently for better communication and coordination. And with that, I thank our viewers who's joined us virtually. With 
with this i declare that the session 10 has ended we look forward to welcome you are again for our next session thank you all thank you shweta with this we have completed with our session number 10 So now moving forward to the session number eleven, that is India sh Indian ship building a possible alternate path to be in the race for next ship building wave. So for this, I request Assistant Professor Vinod Sonawne to give the welcome address and introduction of the speakers as well as the session. Thank you, Professor. 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 Thank you,